What seems to be happening with live service gaming? It's not just that some of the games are terrible, like Concord, which are, we're going to talk about in just a moment, but it seems like this is a long path that we've been headed down for a while, where nobody's interested in these types of games, or the player base has just been fully actualized or realized. There, there are no more players to add. It's a fully saturated market. That seems to be the explanation, but it doesn't explain why games die so quickly. Maybe it does. Let's jump in. Let's start here with Game Developer. They seem to think they know what's going on. They wrote a 12-minute article about it back in November 16th of 2023. And if you look at it, it's been a bad year for game developers. Well, we, we could actually say that for the last several years. Now, people could point to the fact that a lot of these games are rinse and repeat or just copy pasta from various different studio devs, and they would largely be right. But there's something more going on here, and it isn't just the normal things that uh, would basically break down a bad game, like bugs and, and major flaws, and of course an unbalanced system to make one character more powerful than another. Which, that happens all the time, just bad game development and not enough QA. When you look at PC gaming's... When you look at... PC Gaming's take on this particular thing, you'll find that they say I'm officially exhausted with all the live service games, and I want to see less next year. This was in December of 2023, not that far behind what we just saw from the game developer folks. And let me tell you, Molly Taylor's onto something here. Not only does she want to see less, there are going to be less, or at least soon there will be. There seems to be more on the way, and I'm not sure that they're going to stick around very long. You see, the live service formula is doing nobody any good right now, because there's just darn too many. When we get around to January of 2024, things start to accelerate. You see the folks over at University Observer talking about uh, the slow death of live service games. All of that's true. They are slowly dying for lack of interest. Now, you can argue with me all you want, it's just this seems to be the direction we're going. There are only going to be a handful of winners and a whole lot of losers, and as I said, the market itself is saturated. This is a pretty good read if you have time. Moving right along, we hit the infamous reset era. And this actually goes farther back into March of 2023, going backwards a little bit to go forwards. Just talking about the fact that, uh, well, they were bemoaning the uh, squad versus the Justice League, amongst other things, being delayed. But did it really matter? I mean, the squad versus the Justice League was a complete failure beginning to end. Are more and more of these games just generating more and more gamers to hate them? It's quite possible. And when we get finally to Critical Pieces, part of GameWisdom.com, we see that this story by Josh Bryce breaks down the live service as a whole, saying it's not so lively service. And it just doesn't excite anybody anymore. And there's a lot of things that are going on here when we start to talk about the fact that live service gaming's from its very inception in 2010, or at least when the major ones started to show up, people got tired of them rather quickly. Too much rinse and repeat, and very few that could kind of break the mold. I can point to a few, most of them are free to play, but all of these games that are trying to charge money are set to fail. But finally, let's get to somebody you wouldn't normally hear from, the whole heart of this conversation. This is coming out of VIP, which is the Variety Intelligence Platform. Yeah, you guessed it, a trade mag. And the trade mag says Sony's Concord shutdown is an indictment of live service gaming. I agree, wholeheartedly. And as you can see here, the cute little graphic that was right here, I repurposed a little bit for myself. But Concord shuttering less than two weeks after its launch is unheard of at gaming's AAA level. Well, somebody still needs to prove to me that any live service game is AAA, especially this one. I highly doubt it. It was full of all kinds of graphical issues uh, along with, well, an undercooked, underbaked, whichever you prefer, type of gameplay that, again, never seemed to look or feel 
according to the people who played it, much like anything of substance, which is why it, well, drew so few gamers and kept them. Wow, could you imagine getting down to the point where you're saying yay to eight? Because that was the last few hours of this particular game. Eight. A game like Cyberpunk 2077 overcame its difficult launch, but faced different expectations as a singular, single player title. Let's try that again. A game like Cyberpunk 2077 overcame its difficult launch, but faced different expectations as a single player title. Well, of course, that's always going to be true. Most games that are single player have much longer play. Hours and hours worth, hundreds of hours worth. In fact, it also has the opportunity to replay in a different way to make the game seem different or actually be different based on the choices that you make. And finally, maintaining live service creates bandwidth issues that can negatively affect other high priority games. And that's fair. In fact, it's incredibly true. Many of these titles that you're hearing about now uh, that are really doing poorly are really undercutting a lot of things that a lot of these studios do much better. They just make more money on live service games, or at least they think that. I can't agree. Sony Interactive Entertainment on September 3rd made a decision to shut down and take offline the new Concord title less than two weeks after it launched. That's both uh, the latest and most crushing blow yet to what was once an ambitious push into live service games. The upfront $40 price for Concord was a tough sell when free-to-play games are the norm in most live services. Can't argue that one. It's already difficult for a new service to break through when five titles accounted for more than a quarter of all playtime on console and PC last year. I bet you can guess those titles. But the free-to-play model is here to stay and requires such games to add new content constantly and in perpetuity to keep things affordable. That's just how it actually works. Affordability and developer bandwidth are big aspects of which live services can last for years at a time, especially in PlayStation's case. But after Sony acquired Bungie in 2022, the studio has struggled to churn out the new updates quickly enough to keep the lights on. And that speaks to the fact that acquiring a studio that's doing something well won't necessarily work if you try to bring them into your culture, changing their culture, because, well, their culture is what kept it moving forward in the first place. You're only likely to harm it. And that should be a lesson for everybody to learn in business. Don't change something that you buy as culture, because then it's no longer what it was, it's what you want it to be, and it's likely going to go downhill fast. We can go through this entire article and talk at length about what works and what doesn't in live service gaming. Well, what does work is a handful of titles that are free to play that basically have their uh, progression already set in stone, or at least well planned out for the future. And that may be where a lot of these titles struggle, because while they may have these things planned out, they may not be what gamers want. And I think if you find out that you release something that the gamers don't want in any form of an update, well, they're going to start to pull away there as well, which has happened before in giant games in different genres like the MMORPGs. But when Blizzard makes a mistake with World of Warcraft, they certainly are quick to fix it. Is it easier to fix a game that's a live service game? Sure. Do you have the bandwidth, do you have the capability, and do you have the creative staff to do it in a timely manner? No. And what was really funny is the signs were already on the wall. When you look at a game like Concord, you already knew that they were in big trouble. Huge. Because they had an open play beta, they had a closed play beta, and they didn't listen to the audience from either of those. They appreciated the numbers that they got, certainly didn't tax their systems, but they certainly didn't take any of the feedback, which is this game is broken, this game is boring, this game is repetitive, and this game is, well, dare I say it, woke. And that may be the final point here. 
pushing any kind of agenda into video games is always going to be a problem. And perhaps that's a way to destroy the video game industry if, let's say, there were people out there trying to do that. And I suggest there are. In fact, I, I suggest there are more than a few. Why? Well, I've been looking around and there are a number of governmental supported programs out there and have been out there since about 2013 that are designed to do just that in the guise of many, well, wolves clothing, like maybe from a mental health perspective or something similar. And believe it or not, I've got a story for that later in the week, but you'll have to stick around for a little bit of research on my part before we get there. So why did Concord die exactly? And this is where I'm going to wrap things up. It died because it didn't have an audience. It didn't listen to the audience it had. It didn't listen to an audience it could get. And they just kept trudging along. Had they listened to anybody at any stretch along the way, they probably would have been able to survive at least for a little while. And for a game that spent eight years in development and survived a purchase by Sony, well, I don't think you're going to survive for much longer, no, ma no matter how many games that you're currently working on right now, which I haven't heard about any others of you. But it turns out you actually need an audience for your game, and this game did not have one. It also entered into an incredibly busy marketplace, one where the free-to-play games that are on everybody's platform and computer are easily accessible. I think you cannot walk in the door with a $40 game. I don't think you can justify it. The free-to-play stuff is so well-developed now. You can step into Valorant. You can step into, well, Fortnite. You can step into a bunch of these and have an incredible experience time after time. And you accomplish the main goal of just hanging out with some friends and doing a fun thing. Now, if you did want to pay for something, it seems like people are willing to pay for Helldivers too. And I've seen the gameplay and it does look pretty good, but that game is in no danger unless PlayStation does some more foolhardy stuff. And let me say this, PlayStation's been doing a lot of foolhardy stuff, trying to force the PlayStation Network upon everybody that decides to play that game that's not going to be a win, and it certainly won't be in the future. And why are they going about that? Well, it's not for a good reason, I assure you. Ultimately, all of the genres that we've ever played have a very short lifespan. Well, comparatively to the terms of our lifetimes. But at some point, they all seem to fade away into the distance, with very few players left playing them. A very dedicated fan base, but... Folks that just don't move on to something else. Will there be a new uh, looter shooter? Will there be a new live service game that intrigues? Perhaps. But when you're trying to turn everything into live service now, uh, your customers have caught on. And the only reason you're doing it to everything else is because you want to monetize that again. Customers don't want to be pay pigs. They want a good game to play and be done. And if you want pay pigs, you're going to have to go free to play. And I don't know for how much longer that will last. Maybe the next five years, maybe less. We'll keep an eye on it. But let me know what you think. Why did a game like Concord, aside from the various reasons that I mentioned, actually fail? Why did it find its way into the bin in record time for something that was, well, quote unquote, a triple A title? And finally, how many other games do you think this year are going to fail? Now, there are many out there, and one of them I can name off the top of my head, head, which is a Ubisoft game called Star Wars Outlaws. But that's not the only one, and it won't be the only game for the year that Ubisoft has failed. But can you name more? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. Believe it or not, about 65% of you still are not signed up. And you've been here a lot, I can tell. It tells me how many people have been here and how many people are signed up as subscribers. Let that be you today, please. It's the real thing that I ask for on the regular. And if you turn on the notifications icon, you'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a live stream. You'll never miss an important update in the community tab. And believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff that flows through there. In fact, if you're a gold tier member in the membership program here, 
you will be able to actually watch uh, films with myself and Comics Division every other Tuesday, which is just a little something extra that we give gold tier members and well, and higher. And last but not least, just hit the thumbs up button and share this out there because these videos need to go outside of the realm where you're watching them. So set it off to your favorite platform, whether that be Facebook or Instagram or threads or my goodness, uh, even X, because that's kind of where I post a lot of my stuff to. Follow me everywhere, of course, and be sure to take care of yourself. Take care of others, and until next time, see ya.